It's Elimination Week on the Tastemaster SA. Engage with us using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with Royal Baking Powder. Previously, working in pairs, contestants were given the challenge of creating a biscuit and hot drink pairing. With a mastery pinup for grabs, along with a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, the stakes were high. It was Kyle and Nobile who impressed the judges enough to take top honours and avoid this week's elimination challenge. Nearing the end, you don't want to be in an elimination. You want to be at the top and stand out. My first elimination challenge. I am so scared. Fourth elimination in a row. Wow. I think I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Contestants, welcome back to the Tastemaster Kitchen. In the vorige challenge het jy as spanne saam gewerk. Vandag gaan jy as 'n individu veg om jou plek in hierdie kompetisie te behou. Vandag se uitklopronde gaan jou bak vernuf tot die uiterste toets. Ons fokus vandag op een van die mees tegniese style in die bakwêreld. For the challenge, you'll need to create a plated fine dining dessert that ticks all of the boxes. Fine dining. I'm here. Fine dining is <laughs> all the way there. Mama. <laughs> I am excited. Fine dining. I think I'm going to excel in this. We're looking for a sensory experience that is worthy of a spot on any top South African restaurant menu. As someone who's mostly a home cook, this is definitely going to be out of my comfort zone today. I literally feel like I can't do this. Hierdie kompetisie raak nou vier warm. Want vandag gaan julle slegs 2 ure kry om julle gebak voor te sit. This just keeps getting worse. There are a lot of finer details that's required in fine dining. I am disappointed with the time we have been given. And we have one more announcement. Today will be a double elimination. One, going home is stressful enough, but two, that really takes it to the next level. That means the two bottom performing contestants will be going home. My heart literally just went to my feet. This is when the wheels start falling off. Oh, my darling, are you okay? I'm stressed right now. Jay is crying in front of me. He's making me emotional. Like, dude, <laughs> no, not now. <laughs> Jay, are you okay? What's going on? Yeah, I'm... <sighs> I think that was the minute I, I realized, like, the pressure like how big of a challenge it really was. And then I cracked. Breathe. I think it's two things for me. This, I want this so bad, so, you know, it's, it's quite daunting to think that two people are going home, but also looking around, like we've made genuine friendships in this room, is just making my heart sore. So yeah, I just really want this, and I want us all to do well today, and, yeah. Yeah, Jay. Ish. <laughs> Jay just made everyone cry. We've made some incredible friends on the show. I'm already getting emotional. And it's it's going to be a hard day. Of course, Jay, we want you all to do well today. And um, we, we would be very sad to see anybody leave. And so for today's challenge, we've invited a guest judge that's going to help us make that decision. She's no stranger to South African TV screens. She's a cookbook author, entrepreneur, and a renowned cake artist. She's Grace Stevens. With two award-winning cookbooks behind her name, Grace is a master of beautiful edible art with her exquisite sugar flowers and celebration cakes. I'm a mom of four, so busy is just the way of life. And I love to work from home. It's something that I've decided that I want to do, that I want to be around my kids. Grace started her baking journey 15 years ago after the tragic loss of her daughter, Sarah Jane, at birth. She dedicated her business to her daughter, whose memory still lives on through her mom's passion. Going through the grief, I just really found it really difficult to get out of the funk. And my best friend said to me, come on, you've got to do something creative. You've got to do something to really get yourself going. And I wasn't working at the time. I was a stay-at-home mom. And I started baking. And I was just so inundated with orders after a while that that is how Grace Stevens Cake Design was established. I've always loved to bake and when I discovered baking and baking for other people, I just found that it just clicked with me and who I was and what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Today I'm going to take you through some steps that I picked up 
along my career on how to plate a fine dining dessert. I think plating is so important when it comes to fine dining and I could really use a lot of tips today. For my dessert, I'm making a classic Paris breast. So that's a choux pastry. It's piped in a circle and it's going to be filled with hazelnut praline mousseline. And then we're going to put a few elements on the plate to make it fine dining perfect. What I'm looking for from you today are these four most important elements on your plate. Your hero must be your dessert. So for me, it's my Paris breast. Then you've got to have a little bit of crunch and I've got my um, hazelnut praline for that. You need a sauce. I've got my caramel sauce here and then you need a garnish. And I have two garnishes today. I have my strawberry, which creates a pop of color, which is what I'm looking for too. And then I've got my candied hazelnut here to put on it, gives you just that wow factor on your plate. A very important element is your actual plate that you're gonna be putting your dessert on. So I've got a light plate because I want a strong contrast I'm just going to pipe in my mousseline. Mousseline is a custard-based buttercream and I've added some hazelnut praline just to make it extra special. Make sure that you don't put all your elements together on your dessert plate because you want it to be clean. So that's always the last thing that you do. Time for my plate. I'm going to start off with some of my sauce. Now I'll put my crunch element on. Now I'm adding my strawberries. I've kept the stems on my strawberries because I love the botanical feel for springtime. And my last thing is gonna be my candied hazelnuts. I made these by toasting the hazelnuts and then I made some caramel and I dipped the hazelnut into the caramel and turned it upside down until it made this lovely long shard at the bottom of my hazelnut. And now I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna put it on my plate. And those candied hazelnuts, they look great. I think I might just use them. Don't forget your element of height and I've used my candied hazelnut for that just to create some wow factor on your plate. A dust of icing and that is done. Elegance is simplicity. And there's my beautiful dessert. Right, let's welcome Grace Stevens. So nice to see you. I'm really excited. Like she's here in person and oh, I can just tell it's gonna be a great day. It looks so great. Man, that tasting pot needs to come already. You guys are here, which means you can bring it. So today I'm looking for flavor, something that just is amazing on my palate, but it just wows me when I look at it. Thank you, Grace. It looks absolutely beautiful. So you guys can see what we're looking for today. And she's also blessed us with some samples to try and inspire the palate. I've made a Paris Brace before at school, but hers is amazing. With that hazelnut mousseline, it was so good. Oh, it was so good. Mm. Yo. Eating with my hands is not fine dining, but man, I just need to go in. It is a flavor bomb. I, I inhaled the whole thing. Now you have 30 minutes to get planning, then we'll start baking. Go plan. Oh, oh. Off the bat, I think an apple crumble. It's one of my family favorites, and I can definitely deconstruct it into a fine dining plate. I'm thinking along the lines of rooibos, spice, fruit, the first thing that comes to my head is a brownie. It's going to be my special pecanut and dark chocolate brownie. I'm thinking I'm going to make my all-time favorite dessert, which is a creme brulee. I'm going to elevate it a bit, make a berry compote on the side. Up next, the pressure bubbles over as the elimination challenge begins. Who will avoid going home? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Feeling inspired by the fine dining masterclass? Stand the chance of winning a Le Creuset baking hamper. Plus, go into the draw for the grand viewer prize of the Thermomix TM6 that combines more than 15 kitchen appliances in one. To enter, create a bake using Royal Baking Powder, take a pick of your creation with the product and reply to the competition post using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. T's and C's apply. Who will create fine dining perfection and avoid elimination? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. 
Contestants, this is one of the most difficult challenges you've had throughout the competition. Today, you must make a plated fine dining dessert to knock our socks off. The pantry is open to you throughout the challenge, but if you would like a special ingredient, you may use your special ingredient pin. But remember, once you use it, you lose it. Would any of you like to play your pin today? Samantha, what ingredient would you like? For my special ingredient, I'd like to request some bourbon, please. Mmm, interesting ingredient choice. Please hand over your pin. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for bourbon for my special ingredient because I want that flavour in the background to just come through and bring it all together. Would anyone else like to play their special pin? I would like to use my pin. Oh my gosh, Sahel's also playing his pin. May I kindly request a bottle of Cape Vintage Port? And as for alcohol, what is going on here today? The moment I thought of the dessert that I'm making, I thought a Cape Vintage Port would pair really well with it. Thank you, good luck. It has notes of dark chocolate, spice and fruit. Right, that's it. Two pins played in one challenge. Clearly, the stakes are getting higher and higher. Right, contestants, it's time to start your challenge. Are you ready to bake more memories? Yes! yes. Your time starts in... Three, Three two, one. one. Get, Get baking! baking. Today I'm making my take on an apple crumble with a gingerbread cake base and a caramelized white chocolate mousse and I'm going to finish it off with a fresh apple sorbet. So I'm starting on my gingerbread cake. It needs to go into the oven and bake so that it can cool in time. I think that's one of the biggest pressure points today. If the cake's not cool, I can't rest that mousse dome on top of it when I'm plating. Tried and trusted, royal baking powder never fails me. I'm going with a very basic gingerbread cake recipe today. I want it to stand out, but I also don't want it to overpower the hero of my dish, which is the caramelized white chocolate ganache mousse. Today I'm going to make a pecanut and bourbon brownie. This brownie that I'm making is really rich and decadent, and I think I should make something that's going to offset all of that richness. Maybe an ice cream, but maybe not just any ice cream. Maybe even a sugar-free honey ice cream. Hi, Samantha. Hello, I see they've been really cruel and left skins <laughs> on your hazelnuts today. I know. Who do I speak to? <laughs> you say cruel, we say added challenge. Uh -huh. you know, what components can we expect? So we've got a, an ice cream. And I'm pairing that with a bourbon and pecanut dark chocolate brownie. Mm. Then I'm going to do a coral twill. And I'm going to do a praline and a ganache. Wow, wow. a lot Very to do, ambitious. Samantha. A lot to do. Good luck. Thank you. Currently, I'm onto my honeycomb. I've got my sugar, glucose, and vinegar in there. You let that caramelize, then you add bicarb. When you add the bicarb to the caramelized sugar, it creates a reaction with the vinegar, which is quite spectacle to watch. Uh, my honeycomb is done. The smoke is getting to my eyes. It looks like a volcano erupting to the brim. Ooh, we've got a honeycomb volcano happening here. Yes. You happy with your honeycomb? Yes. I like my honeycomb a bit on the darker side. With the dish that I'm making, I want it to be a bit bitter. It's still going, it's still yes. going. Okay, so where are we using the port? Where will we see the, the port, port in your dessert? The port is going to go in here in my raspberry and rooibos coolie. Okay. Well, Suhail, you're running up and down a lot today. Yeah. So have you got everything under control or are you a bit stressed? Is that why there's so much I movement? I am a bit stressed. But it's a competition and I guess stress is vital. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I hope that doesn't go over. It is. It's, I can smell it. It's burning now. Uh -huh. It's not looking good. I over caramelized my sugar, which made me result in having blackjack, which is burnt sugar. Luckily, I have more time to make a new batch of honeycomb. This is my first attempt at a cremo, which, by the way, I didn't even know how to spell. <laughs> it is a custard-based dessert. So the first thing I need to do is get that custard onto the stove and get it to the right temperature. This is very important because if that gelatin doesn't set, I'm just going to have a custard mix. Megan, <sighs> voila. I see you're finally yes, using your finally. personal item. My vanilla paste from home. It only has enough for one more dish and today is the day I'm going to use it. It's my vanilla paste from my sister that she bought in Zanzibar. Oh, I've got goosebumps. So. <laughs> this is a, I can't wait to taste it. Yes. Me too. Yeah, so it's, what will we be tasting? Okay, so it is a deconstructed pavlova. 
My um, favourite dessert. Uh, oh, <laughs> pressure. <laughs> For my creamy elements, I want to do a cremo in moulds. Then obviously the meringue and the strawberries all around it and a cream. Yeah, leave the rest for a surprise okay. for oh, me. Oh, oh, okay, I was going to ask more, but you are. I'm just okay. like, oh, my, I'm celebrating so, here. <laughs> I'm starting here with my creme brulee. My cream is getting warm and then I'll be mixing it inside the egg yolks. And then just need to make sure it doesn't scramble in the oven. So I'll be baking it inside a water bath. If it splits, it's all wrong. What makes my berry compote the best is that it's got lots of flavors, spice-wise, herbs, orange zest, it's gonna be earthy as well, the best. Smelling absolutely amazing at this corner of the kitchen. <coughs> Thank you. So today I'll be making creme brulee. Oh, yes. I thought you were going to say Devonshire sponge. <laughs> I love it when Not I have today. to crack my dessert before yes. I eat it. Well, you seem very calm and relaxed today, Loisy. I feel like today is finally the day you came with a plan. <laughs> yes? Yes, I oh, did. Yes. <laughs> Don't you normally have a plan? Do you like to win no, it? I, I just go with it. I'll go with the flow. Tando, I don't think I have ever seen you move this fast. Well, less than 30 minutes in, I see you're turning something. Yeah. You're using, you're whisking one hand, tossing with another. Wow. Launching, stirring. I'm loving this. I'm so excited. What are you going to make? My flavor is orange, chocolate, and spices. So I'm going to make a spiced brioche with my chocolate parfait and a orange yogurt um, sorbet. OK, brioche, uh, interesting choice. Do you, have you left yourself nice. enough time? for it to rise adequately? I don't know, two hours is very little time, so I hope so. I yeah. can only hope so. To make my parfait, I get my chocolate melted, I've got my cream whipped to stiff peak, and I've got my egg mixture with gelatine. Combine all of those and straight into the freezer. The chocolate is not um, doing what it needed to do, so I need to start over because it's it's gone solid in my parfait. Today is not the day to be making mistakes. Two people are going home two hours to cook, it's just not the day. Contestants, you have one and a half hours left to complete your bake. Come on, guys, you can do it! My honeycomb went way darker than I wanted it to, so I made a new batch there. I'm very happy with that, actually. So here I've got my berry sauce. I'm just gonna wait for this to cool. The base of my dessert is going to be a fruit and spice tort. I'm keeping my cakes really thin, which means they bake for only 10 minutes as we only have two hours, so in they go. For my mousse, I need to caramelize some white chocolate, so I throw the chocolate into a pan straight onto the Samsung gas cooker. I'm using the triple burner because it heats quickly and evenly, and it will give me a nice caramelization on the sugars. Whenever I go to fine dining restaurants, there's always some kind of dome on the plate. So I'm gonna do my mousse, put it into a dome mold, and straight into the freezer. Oh, Jay, you would not be allowed in my kitchen, dude. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, my yeah. mom says that to me all the time. <laughs> what is the reason for the mess? What is the dessert you're making today? One of the things that's really close to my heart is apple crumble. It's taking me back to my family on a Sunday. We have a Sunday jaw, we jazz, we listen to some. You know, I into your family. We listen to some Anita Baker. Okay. I'm basing my dessert today on that, but I'm trying to elevate it as much as possible. Hello. Samantha, how are you? Yes, how are you? It's going good. Everything is busy with my plaque to fall. And I have alcohol. And I use this in my brownie. I've never used it with brownie. I've used it alcohol. I've used it in a specific bourbon. It's a very, very specific yeah. smell. What do you hope that it brings you to the brownie? So my brownie is rich and it's decadent and it's toasted uh, pecan nuts and I'm serving salted caramel sauce. So it's all like musky, deep flavors, rich flavors, and I want this bourbon to just be the backup dancer in the back that goes, yeah. hey, I'm here too, yeah. but this is my people and everything works well together. Yeah. Yeah. The Taste Master competition came on my path very suddenly. Uh, it's not really something I saw myself doing. It's not anything I really planned for myself, you know, being on TV and being vulnerable like that, putting yourself out there. But at the same time, I wanted to see what I was capable of. and. Just being stuck in that comfort, you know, in your bubble, you don't really grow, you don't really know who you are because you get comfortable. So I was like, let me take on this challenge and see what I'm capable of. And let's see what happens when Sam is put under pressure. <laughs> I 
I just realized that I forgot to line my tins before I put the brownie mixture in. I want them to just slide out and that might not happen. Up next, will the pressure of elimination get the better of Samantha? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. got a few extra tins ready, so I'm going to line those. Sam's actually pretty dope under pressure. <laughs> I've learned a completely different side of my personality exists. And it's nice, I've gotten to know her and I really enjoy the confidence that I've gained through putting myself out there, through pushing my boundaries and getting out of my comfort zone. I need a breather. <laughs> I'm making a mess, that's what's happening. <laughs> Megan, looks like you're having a fantastic time. <laughs> what kind of meringues did you end so up making? So it's a dry meringue. I'm doing meringues two ways because I want a bit of a crunch element for the base. This time I'm using almonds, last time it was the pecan nuts. Your meringue tastes amazing. Thank you very much. This one is looking a lot better, but there's quite a bit still left to do. My frozen yogurt is churned and ready to go into the Samsung bespoke fridge. I'm going to leave it in right until that last minute. It's a no-frost freezer, so you know for sure that the texture of my ice cream is going to be perfect. To make my ganache, I heated cream and I have white chocolate in a bowl. Along with a bit of lemon juice, I'm going to pour the hot cream over the chocolate and whisk that till it's smooth, then add in a bit of raspberry coulis. My creme brulees just came out. I love how they look. And then also I'm busy here with my garnishes. <gasps> Look at that. This is my favorite thing to do. I must say this is the first time I'm doing these. These colors will work perfectly with my creme brulee. Two hours is a very short time. But today I'm loving it. I'm on time. I've planned for the first time. Maybe I should plan more. What are you busy with right now? Okay, so I've got my dog de leche going. Awesome. My mousse is in, my sorbet is ready. What bread are you making? A spiced brioche. Fritz is the bread master. He looks worried on my behalf. Is making a brioche from scratch with one hour left a bad idea? I don't think so, guys. I got this. Trust me. <laughs> I've been going back and forth about the sorbet today, but I'm going full steam ahead and I'm going to do it. What's going to make the sorbet really delicious is the fact that I'm using fresh apple juice today. Fresh is always best. It's going to add a little bit of zing, and I think that will lift the flavor profile of the dish itself. Well, Jay, you had an emotional start, but it seems like you've focused yourself. You've applied all that nervous energy into your bake today. My parents have always encouraged me to just express any emotion possible, but also to make your intentions clear. And my intention today was really just to prove that I can do it. During the masterclass, Grace mentioned that one of the elements in a fine dining dish is to use a sauce. The best thing for me to do is make a curry. To make my plate more visually appealing, I decide to add a twill, so I quickly toast some star anise, get that crushed, and then dust that off on top of my twill once it's cooked, just to reinforce that flavor of the spiciness going with the chocolate too. My brownies are in the oven, and it's time to make my plating. I throw all of my ingredients into my pot, and I reach for what I thought was salt. So this was gonna be my praline, but it's a weird gross green color, so I think something went wrong. So I'm gonna chuck it and start again. That wasn't salt, that was bicarb. I literally have two elements done. I still need to make three. I'm stressing, I'm stressing. Contestants, less than 30 minutes to go. I hope that your delicious fine dining desserts are on their way to completion. Come on, guys. I'm really thinking about Grace's advice of creating hype. For the fun of it, I'm gonna try and do some full sugar today. Jay, this is very exciting. I think today, out of all days, one has to pull out all the stuff. I fully agree. Yeah. What flavor is that? So it's a uh, treacle sugar flavor. Ooh. So to add that extra caramelizedness. Yum, yum. I'm just gonna steal a piece. Look I away. It's not burnt. I hope so too. Mm. Look at you go, Jay. Go, Jay. Jay. Okay. I need to do this quick, 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 quick. For garnish, I'm gonna make some twirls. So twirls are basically a really, really flat biscuit. To top off my creme brulee, I'm gonna sprinkle some sugar. 
Use a blowtorch. And when I present, you need to get a crack on it. Sure. So, Hal, that looks amazing. Have you tempered that? So, I did a little bit of tempering mm -hmm. where I didn't melt the chocolate completely. I don't have enough time to temper my chocolate. It is a fine dining challenge. I hope it doesn't work against me. I was thinking of making a coral twill. It's really simple. It's a lot of liquid and a little bit of oil and just a tiny little bit of flour to bring it together. And yet again, it's not working. So I don't have time to stress about this little twill. I'm chucking it. Sam? Hi. I hear you have scrapped one of your elements. My twill was giving me a hard time. OK. And I got no time for drama, so it's gone. OK. I I'm not having a good day. Contestants, what? 10 minutes left. You're in your final really? 10 minutes. Come, come on, on, guys, come on, come on. We've got 10 minutes left on the clock, and I realized that I completely forgot about my salted caramel sauce. Ooh, ooh. She angry. In goes my butter, and it's spitting everywhere. And I am whisking like I am in the Olympics. Can you call me? From the get-go, I knew exactly how I wanted to plate my dish. I am going to put a line of raspberry gel, throw in some macerated raspberries in the center of the tort, pipe white chocolate ganache around, put the chocolate disc on top of the white chocolate ganache. I'm not happy because I can see fingerprints on my chocolate, and that's not a good sign to play it with. I don't know what to do. Contestants, there are five minutes left. Because this is a fine dining challenge, you will be granted a few extra minutes when the time has ended. To finalize your plating, when the time has been completed, you are not allowed to bake any further. You are only allowed to plate. Oh, flip. Awesome. Thank you. I need this or else I'm going to have nothing on that plate. I'm happy with the extra minutes given to us. But with me, I think I'll be done within the two hours. One minute left. I might look like I'm stressing, but I'm secretly calm. And I'm actually looking quite good with time today. This is actually working. Those are getting nice and dehydrated. Who knew you could dehydrate strawberries in a microwave? Five, four, three, two, one. Start baking. Ooh, my plate is looking gorgeous. I finished my dish within the first two hours. I am happy and confident with myself. Contestants, start plating. Grace mentions that the plate you choose is very important in bringing the whole dish together, and I think I chose a pretty beautiful plate. I take my cremeurs out of the deep freeze. They have set, but they haven't frozen. This is my first problem of this plating. This is the hardest part for me. I'm not good at fun dining. That's not my speciality. How the heck am I going to put this all together? And I start to stress. I entered the competition knowing that I'm not a professional chef, but I really wanted to just push myself and see how well I could do and really just try hard to bring out the skills that I have and also learn new skills along the way. I never thought I'd get this far in the competition. For me, it's a huge personal achievement. Every time that I go further and further, I'm just so proud of myself. And really, it's just such an incredible experience. And I'm just taking every challenge as it comes. I'm just not happy every time I play it. There's something about it that's off, and I knew this was going to be my problem. I don't really know. But time's running out, and I just have to get something onto that plate. There's no chocolate disc. That's fine. There's no twill. Also fine. Now we just need to make sure that the plating looks beautiful. All right, everybody. Your time for plating is now up. Please step away from your plates. Yes, I'm finally done. Ooh, it's been a day. Considering that we only had two hours and my first mousse didn't work out, um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's okay. I'm not happy with the way this is looking. I mean, I'm not a perfectionist, but at the same time, I want things to look pretty, and this for me is not pretty. Hey, you are a superhero. You got this, okay? We're all here with you. Next, after an emotional end to the challenge, who will impress the judges with their fine dining bakes? Tell us using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with the Tastemaster SA and tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Part of the dish I've put together, I'm feeling very confident in putting it in front of the judges. Let's see how they feel. I've made an orange frozen yogurt 
with chocolate mousse, spiced brioche, chocolate and hazelnut crumb, and a dulce de leche. Tando, you really worked hard and had so many elements on this plate. The spice notes in that feathery, lacy twill with the spice and the brioche, so wonderful when you eat it with the chocolate. I think it kind of clashes a little bit with the yogurt. There's something about it for me that doesn't work in unison, but I'm, I'm so impressed at the technique that you showed. Well done. Uh, what I experienced from your dish was high level stuff. Uh, the nuances, the spice that came through in the combination uh, with the brioche, well played with that. Fritz loves my brioche. I am happy with that given that he's like the bread king. Each bite was an adventure. I, I don't know where the brioche fitted with the whole dessert. I almost feel like it was an element that wasn't necessary. Your spice and your chocolate just came together. It was really nice. A lot of hard work and it paid off, definitely. Thank you. Throughout this competition, my family have been the biggest support to me. I don't think I could have done it without them. They are my biggest fans. They just encourage me to do my best and it really keeps me going. To win this competition would be a dream come true. I just feel so blessed to have come this far and already my kids think I'm like some kind of famous person because they see me on TV and it's so cool for them to see that. Um, but for my career, if I could go all the way and get to the finale and actually win it, it would just be a dream come true. It would just be amazing to win. Off the bat, absolutely out of your comfort zone, unfamiliar yeah. as a home baker, yeah. stepping into fine dining at this level of competition. Yeah. I'm extremely proud of you. How are you feeling? Um, hmm. I got all the elements on the plates. It's not the prettiest dish. But I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Megan, you say it's not the prettiest, but I think it's a it's a beautiful plate. You know, the colours are lovely, and you made a cremeau. That is a very <laughs> fine dining, you know, item to make. So you pushed the boat, and you should be proud of yourself. Megan, that cremeau was delicious. That was definitely the highlight of this bake. Great textures. It's beautiful in its simplicity but I wanted a little bit more intrigue, that's all. I could taste the pepper in the meringue and I loved it. I loved your coolie, it was a flavor punch. Your meringue was a little bit overbaked, but otherwise, I enjoyed that. And the decision to use that little bit of vanilla that you had left, your special ingredient from home, the flavor that it gave to that delicious vanilla, oh, yum, yum, yum. My goodness, Jay has definitely got his game face on and he brought it today. This dude pulled sugar, yo, in two hours. That is impressive. Well, Jay, are those tears of relief that I see in your <laughs> eyes? Yeah, I'm just overjoyed, to be honest. I'm super proud of myself. I cook a lot for my family, my friends, but today this was for me. Mm. It was to prove that I can do it. I've failed so many times with so many things in my life, but baking has always been the one thing that I've always been able to do right. So this was a love letter to myself. Oh. Sure. Oh, Jay, oh, I'm not going to be able to keep, keep like, the waterworks from coming. Jay, this is the most good looking apple crumble I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I've made a gingerbread cake base with an apple compote and the mousse on top. So the mousse is almost there to to replace the custard that you would traditionally have. And then I've also got a crumb, a spice crumb, some fresh apple, a bit of butterscotch. And in our family, we always love to have some kind of ice cream or sorbet on the side. So you can have together, but you can also just have it just to cleanse your palate. I think your love letter is beautifully written. It's really, really stunning to look at. I'm just sad that you didn't think a little bit more about putting the sorbet onto the plate because when you're having a fine dining experience, you know, they don't give you an option of ice cream on the side. It's a beautiful full plate where every element has a purpose, but excited nonetheless to try it. Wow, Jay, <laughs> every element on this plate, it's just an adventure in my mouth. But I 
I want that recipe for that sorbet. That sorbet could have been the star of the show as well. So I am I'm a bit disappointed that it wasn't on the plate, but I'm so impressed with this candy work. This is not easy. I think if I was fine dining and I ordered this as a dessert, I would definitely feel like I got my money's worth. I feel so good because at one point I did consider leaving the sorbet off. Perfectly executed. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the support has been overwhelming. Honestly, it's not really something I ever anticipated. Yeah, getting a bit emotional, but it's nice to see the love and the support that people have for me. And it's not just the people who are close to me, who are in my bubble. It's strangers who I've never met are going, yay, Sam, you know, you got this. And it's, it's really touching. The thinking behind my fine dining dessert was as a thank you for my husband for holding the fort while I've been on production, not being able to focus on the family as much. And my business is a one woman show, it's me. My best friend who's also a wedding cake designer has been handling that side of my life for me. So as a thank you and a tribute to the both of them, I wanted to make something that they both would enjoy eating. So I used my pin for bourbon, and I incorporated that into my brownie. So my brownie is pecanut, dark chocolate, and bourbon. I've paired that with a sugar-free honey ice cream, and then I did a hazelnut and almond praline and a caramel sauce. And this is paying tribute to the support that I have at home, sorry, with my bestie and my husband. <laughs> you good? I'm good. <laughs> Samantha, I'm so impressed. I love the way you took a dessert that's comforting, like brownies and ice cream, and you've just made it high class and fine dining. Samantha, that is a fantastic brownie. Whoa, deep, rich flavors. And I so get the ice cream. The praline is fantastic. I gotta say, I thought there would be a bit more of the bourbon coming through. I thought that would be more uh, prominent. As far as the ice cream for me, I would have liked it to be slightly sweeter to almost complement the dish. It was almost like it was too much of a contrast to the sweetness of your um, brownie. For me, I'm just sad that there wasn't more bourbon because you know, you took the risk, you played that pin. I just wanted it to sing more. Maybe if you'd put some in the caramel as well, it would have added, you know, more warm notes of bourbon, but a delicious dessert. Thank you. The reason I chose to use my pin for the port is because the notes of the port are fruit, deep spice, and a hint of dark chocolate. And that's what my dish has in it. There's a raspberry gel, a rooibos whipped cheesecake, honeycomb, a mixed fruit and spice torte, along with a white chocolate ganache and a dark chocolate disc. Judges, you ready? Yes, yes. please. Let's test. So, Hale, I think that the dish was so beautifully presented, so well done for putting together a really elegant fine dining plate. The shame for me is that I can't taste the rooibos. It's overpowered by the white chocolate ganache, which I think is actually an unnecessary element because you were talking about the flavor notes of the port and the dark chocolate. Had that been a dark chocolate ganache, I think that that would have you know, helped the flavor profile. For me, in terms of the presentation, what I was not crazy about visually was it seems like this decoration here, this syrupy, what is that? Like a it was a gel. It's a gel. Yeah. It seems like it's dried out quite a bit. For me, it felt like it, it might have caught some air or a temperature difference. I struggled to find the star of the show on your plate. Maybe if we got more of your sponge, I would have got more rooibos. And I, I wanted more of a snap on your chocolate. I wanted it, it should have been tempered properly. There should have been a lovely shine on it. And if it's fine dining, that's what I'm expecting. Cutthroat feedback, yo. I was feeling really confident before, 
However, now I have a feeling that I could be going home. Right now, I'm feeling good. Looking at my plate, this is fine dining. I'm happy. Luazi, well done. It looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Luazi, I love how with every masterclass, you seem to find inspiration and actually incorporate it into your plate. I think that that's such a wonderful trait to have and it looks absolutely beautiful. What's on top of your creme brulee that's holding up your tool there? Uh, cream cheese. Ooh. Yes. Spiky sachta. Mm. Mm, I think it's split. Yeah, but I'm confident in my flavors. Well, your creme brulee did not disappoint. It was really, really nice. I'm not sure where your cream cheese came in. I don't think it, it should have been there. And your berry cruelly, there wasn't enough of it. I really would have liked to have tasted because you spent so much time on that element, but I didn't get so much on the plate. Loisy, for me, I thought that the flavor of the creme brulee was really delicious. Unfortunately, it did disappoint me in texture. Um, it is overbaked and it's slightly split, so it's not that smooth, velvety creme brulee texture in your mouth. You nailed those pulled hazelnuts. Well done for that. Up next, with a double elimination on the cards, whose bake will be sending them home? Let us know what you think using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Who will make it one step closer to the Tastemaster title and win prizes worth more than 90,000 Rand? including state-of-the-art Samsung home and kitchen appliances, like a 45-litre convection microwave oven with sensor cook technology and steam clean, as well as the Thermomix TM6 smart connected cooker, plus Le Creuset kitchen accessories. Bake more memories with a Tastemaster SA and Royal Baking Powder. Well, contestants, another elimination challenge done. It has just been such a pleasure to be here today. I was so impressed. But two people stood out today. So Tando and Jay, I want to congratulate you on meeting the brief, like spot on. Your desserts definitely were fine dining desserts and would be brilliant on any menu in any South African restaurant. So well done, you guys. Well done. I'm smiling from ear to ear. This has reaffirmed everything that I've worked so hard for. I'm so proud of what I've achieved today. I am shocked because for most of the competition, I felt like I was just sort of floating in the middle. And today I got to shine. <laughs> With the remaining four, please step forward. Each of you presented a component today as part of your bake that's truly worth celebrating. I want you to take hold of that thought. But the request was for the perfect fine dining plated dessert. We believe all four of you fell short of the mark. Two of you will be going home today. The first contestant going home is Loazi. Oof. Feels like I've been hit by a bus. We are very sad to see you go. We thought that your plated dessert looked beautiful, but unfortunately the baked item on your plate was curdled. I want to cry right now, but I'm like, dude, you will not cry on TV. You will not cry. The second person will be going home today. It's so hell. I don't even know how to feel right now because it's been a long day with ups and downs, but I know that I put my best foot forward in this competition. Today was a day where you should have stepped up. This was familiar territory for you. We felt like some of the components were actually under the bar that we have set for you. But we wish you all the best. Thank you. So to both of you, I felt like this competition has pulled you upward. The added bonus of making friends and fans. 
We will be following your careers very closely. Good luck and all the best. It's not the end of the world. Um, I know there's greater things to come out of this whole competition. I'm happy for the opportunity that I got to be part of Tastemaster Season 2. This competition has taught me to live for the moment and in the moment. And from here, I'm just going to hold my skill and craft. And this is not the last time you're going to be seeing Sahel. To greater heights and to making more memories. <laughs> Next Friday, the top six contestants tackle a new challenge that will test their savoury skills. With a guest judge known for using unique wild ingredients and with elimination on the cards once again, the pressure is on. Another feel-good production.